Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi everyone, this is Daily Racing Forum's second Kentucky Derby Watch for 2024. I'm Brad Free, joined by David Aragona. David, only one three-year-old stakes race last weekend with potential derby, derby implications. And the main change to Derby Watch this week is a result of what did not happen in the Sam Davis down at Tampa Bay Downs. What did not happen? Well, Locke did not participate, and also Locke did not have a timed workout. Uh, and I know we had initially heard in that report that he had a fever that Pletcher was hoping to get him a workout in last weekend. That clearly didn't happen. As of the time we're recording this Wednesday afternoon, uh, Locke has not had a workout in nearly three weeks. And that's not something that you want to see happen for a top contender for the Derby. I know it's still February, but now we're getting into that crunch time where if this horse doesn't get fit pretty quickly when he returns to the work tab, Maybe there's not time to squeeze into prep races, and then that becomes a real problem. So uh, Locked is going to drop down Derby Watch this week. Locked was the early favorite in our very first Derby Watch list, and uh, I don't blame you for raising his price um, all the way up to odds of 20 to 1. But let's go ahead and take a look at the list and see who is now atop the list. And we have a new early favorite, I suppose, is one way to put it. Yeah, it's sort of a, a lukewarm favorite, very lukewarm, as uh, this derby picture is just extremely wide open right now. Uh, and it just felt wrong setting a horse really lower than 10 to 1 in terms of the odds at this stage, just given how open the picture is and with so much left to be determined, especially before we run the Risen Star this upcoming weekend, which, of course, we'll talk about in our preview segment a little bit later. Uh, but Sierra Leone, he is the 12 to 1 favorite, just slightly over his Renson rival, Doorknock. Uh, uh, we'll obviously see Sierra Leone competing this weekend. But as you can see, I've got a cluster of horses in that 12 to 15 to 1 range. And it just feels like at this stage, favoritism is open to many horses. No doubt about it. There's several price changes on the list. As far as the names that have come and gone, um, we added no more time. He won the Sam Davis in gate to wire fashion. We'll be talking about that in a minute. And the one horse who dropped was Sneed. Um, he was the runner up in the gun runner stakes. He was on our list last week. And I'll just talk about what Mark uh, Daily Race Informs Marcus Hirsch reported. According to trainer Brendan Walsh, he said Sneed, quote, had an issue we had to look into that looks pretty minor end quote. So this is Hirsch talking to trainer Brendan Walsh. Sneed is galloping at Turfway Park. He's off the Derby watch list for now. We will continue to monitor his situation. But even in February, not a real good development um, for Sneed to have a setback. As far as the other uh, horses that, you know, high ranking horses, you mentioned Locke, David. His last workout was January 26th. He did not enter the Sam Davis on February 10th. And here we are on Valentine's Day and Locke still does not have a workout. So it's taking him a little bit longer to recover from this reported fever than I think anyone expected, including trainer Todd Pletcher. Sierra Leone, he's the new favorite on the Derby Watch list, at least until the Risen Star Stakes has been run. Um, you, you talked about the it's a relatively high price for a favorite, even this early 12 to 1, right? It is. And I made a lot of tweaks from last week to this week, even with horses that didn't have activity or participate, because I was checking out some different future wager lines uh, in Vegas and also the last uh, Kentucky Derby future wager pool, just trying to get a better line on some of these horses. Because I remember last year at this time, we had two clear favorites in Arabian Night and Forte, who I think I had at six to one and eight to one. But the Derby picture seemed a lot more settled at that point in time. And obviously, there were developments that changed that later. This year, it just feels a lot more wide open than last year. So I wanted to adapt the line to that situation. Yeah, it definitely seems wide open. One of the horses that seems to be picking up a little bit of steam is Timberlake. You dropped his odds from 20 to one down to 15 to one. Um, he's supposed to run next weekend, February 24th in the Rebel Stakes at Oakland Park. He outworked catching freedom in a team workout on February 10th, and he looks super doing it. Um, workouts in the morning are one thing, Afternoon races are another, but Timberlake, uh, he, his odds dropped from 20 down to 15 to 1. Are you comfortable with that? 
Yeah, I'm comfortable with that for now, and we'll see if that uh, stays a right price on him after the Rebel, where he's pointing. Uh, but uh, it's sort of an opposite situation to what's going on with Locked. Both horses coming out of third and fourth place finishes in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, one dropping down the list due to inactivity, and uh, one jump, jumping up the list due to some uh, high-profile, impressive activity. And Timberlake, I mean, we should point out, he's always been a star in the mornings. He is such an excellent workout horse. The issue with Timberlake has been harnessing that talent in the afternoon. He can get a little rank in his races, be difficult to ride. So we'll see if he's matured mentally in the Rebel. Well, we will be talking more about that race as we get a little bit closer. Before we talk about the Sam Davis, I want to talk a little bit about the points situation. And it's way too early in the season to you know, talk about the status and where a horse ranks on the points list. But I think even right now, we can acknowledge the points dilemma in Southern California and maybe even next week at Oakland Park in the Rebel Stakes. And it's a direct result of the Churchill Downs ban of Baffert trainees. I want to briefly re revisit a report that uh, Daily Race Informs David Grenig wrote about last week. And he pointed out that Baffert trainees have won all three points races in Southern California, not counting the Breeders' Cup. Muth, Winstock, and Nisos, the American Pharaoh, the Los Al Futurity, and Bob Lewis. Grenig wrote that Baffert trainees absorbed 60 of the 84 points available in those races. Now, it could be a, sa a similar situation next week in the Rebel if Baffert does, in fact, send one of his four Rebel nominees to Oakland Park for that race. And th the point is this. The 2024 Derby points scheme, there, there will be fewer points awarded to eligible horses. Baffert trainees not eligible for the Kentucky Derby. So if fewer points are awarded, it will require fewer points to make it into the Kentucky Derby list. Again, in the middle of February, we don't need to start you know, comparing who has the points yet, but I think it's something that we need to monitor. As for points this week, the Risen Star, 50 points to the winner, 25 to the runner-up, and we'll talk about the Risen Star and a very interesting fairgrounds allowance race in the previous segment. But first, let's review what happened last week on the racetrack. David, talk more about the no-locked Sam Davis stakes at Tampa Bay Downs. Well, it was a large competitive field participating, or at least it seemed that way coming in. But obviously, no horses had the credentials of Locke, who would have been a heavy, heavy favorite in this race. And No More Time, who went off a somewhat surprising 3-1 to -one favorite. I, don't, I didn't foresee that ahead of time, uh, but uh, definitely a horse that took a big step forward off his prior form, had had a somewhat troubled trip in the Mucho Macho Man, showed improved early speed here to get ahead of some fast horses into the clubhouse turn, and just led these every step of the way with Agate Road sort of clunking up for Second, he was rattling from towards the back of the pack. This race got a low speed figure. I think we have to be upfront about that. But we should note, No More Time was setting a fast pace. Um, I was looking at the time form US pace figures for this race. They're all color coded in red, indicating it was an extremely fast pace considering the final time. So I think you do want to give No More Time credit for that. But still, he was beating a subpar field compared to what we're going to expect to see in some of the upcoming prep races. Yeah, it looked like a weak race going in, and it kind of looks like a weak race going out. Let's take a look at the PPs for the top two finishers, uh, No More Time and Agate Road. And as you can see, an 80 buyer speed figure. I know it's only February, and yeah, he did the dirty work up front, but you're going to have to run a little bit faster. You have to run a lot faster to be considered a viable uh, Kentucky Derby candidate. We put him on the list. He deserves to be on the list, I suppose, at this stage of the game. Um, but he still has more to prove. Agate Road, I'm not sure what to make of his performance because you're right, David. He had a really fast pace to run at. He also did not break very well. He was tr back at the back of the field. He ran on well late. I just can't get past the fact that an 80 buyer wins the race and a 78 buyer finishes second. So it seemed like a weak race. But for now, the time being at least, no more time is definitely on the list. Okay, before we wrap this thing up, I'm going to let's talk about some possible takeaways. Just to reiterate what I said earlier, I don't think the Sam Davis was all that significant so far. Yes, no more time has a license to improve. So does Agate Road. But if those two horses show up in the Tampa Bay Derby on March 9th, as I expect they will, they might have their hands full with domestic product. He finished second in the Holy Bull. 
He is reportedly headed to the Tampa Bay Derby, and I would expect him to perhaps go favored. He earned an 87 buyer, finishing second in the Holy Bowl, whereas No More Time earned an 80. We haven't talked much yet about the Japan road to the to the Derby, and the current leader is Forever Young. The highest in the stakes will be run this weekend in Tokyo, and that's another race on the on the Japan road to the Derby. And the winner will go to the top of the Japan list because Forever Young is headed to Saudi Arabia for the Saudi Derby. I, I bring it up again only to reemphasize that this year in particular, with no horses from California and no Baffert trainees um, on the Derby list, that maybe this is a year where the Derby winner or at least some Derby starters show up from lower profile circuits. As for Forever Young, who is on the Derby Watch list, I respect him. He's a very, he's a terrific athlete. He's three for three, but his itinerary, Japan to Saudi Arabia, and then maybe back to Kentucky, that is a lot to ask for a three-year-old. We'll see how he runs in Saudi Derby and whether he does, in fact, make it to the United States. David, how about your takeaways from this week's Derby Watch? Yeah, Forever Young is a horse that I'm excited about and will be interesting to see how some of these Japanese horses qualify for the Derby because the ones that have att attracted the most attention coming into the Kentucky Derby, they don't qualify through that Japan road to the Derby. They qualify through the points awarded in the UAE Derby. So we'll see if Forever Young is using the Saudi Derby as a prep for that race because obviously Churchill Downs does not recognize the Saudi Derby or award points for it. So uh, we'll see how that develops for him. But I agree with your sentiment that this could be a good year for a new face and uh, maybe might be a horse that's not even on the list at this point that ends up attracting a lot of attention through the final round of prep races. Obviously, for me, horses that are 25 to 1 or lower on this current Derby watch that are participating in that race. So a lot could change even between this week and next. A lot of things will change, definitely for after the Risen Star Six this weekend. That's a wrap for this week's Derby Watch review segment. We hope that you join David and I for the preview segment that will be coming up next we'll be talking about key races at fairgrounds the risen star and allowance race maybe a little bit about the sunland derby and our on the bubble segment that's coming up next for david aragona i'm brad free we'll see you next time